Hello, fans of uh, this thing that whatever I do here. Welcome back to Pav Talks About Insane Bullshit <gasps> That No One Cares About, episode fucking <laughs> 8 million. Today we're gonna be talking about the N64 controller and how much it sucks. Now, I know that that's not entirely fair. I mean, this thing was developed in like, what, 96, 95 probably? So looking at this controller with the modern lens might not be the most fair thing, but here's the thing. This controller, even though it is probably older than me, affects me in my everyday life, or at least close to everyday life. Okay, so let's take a modern controller as an example. I don't really use the DualSense anymore. I really should sell this thing because I don't use it very much. But I'm sure as anyone who plays video games watching this channel knows that this is sort of close to what the normalized layout of controllers is. You have the PlayStation layout and you have the Xbox layout and Nintendo kind of is like just going with the Xbox layout now with their new Switch controllers. But this is still the standard. You've got two sticks, four buttons, uh, start and select, a D-pad, and your four shoulder buttons. Like, every controller has those now. And the DualSense here is just a slightly modified version of the DualShock, the PlayStation 4 controller, which itself is a modified version of the 6-axis controller, or the PlayStation 3 controller, which that controller was a modified PS1 controller, and the PS1 controller was a modified Super Nintendo controller. There's actually like genuinely a rich history behind like the development of video game controllers, something that I actually do want to go into later on down the line on this channel. But for now, I want to talk about something very specific that I run into all the time whenever I emulate N64 games. And that is, how do you make this work on something like this? At first it might seem pretty simple, you know, you got the D-pad, you've got A and B, you've got some uh, camera buttons right here that, you know, could probably you could probably just map them to this stick right here. The analog stick right here, you can just map it to that one. And you got some uh, triggers down here, you got the Z button, you can just map those over here, that's no problem, right? And I mean, yeah, you can make it work, but like, as much as I don't like this controller, it still warms my heart to go back and play like Yoshi's Story, just holding an original N64 controller. But if I wanted to sit and emulate an N64 game just to get a better experience, there really isn't a method for me to make this controller feel more authentic. And I would say that Nintendo are the kings of innovation for innovation's sake. Yeah, they push boundaries and they try new things and they do all sorts of zany shit, but doing it for the sake of doing it leads to things like the Wii U. Actually, wait, let me go get my tablet. Even if it's comfortable to hold, there are no games that actually take advantage of the fact that you have a second screen on your controller. And even Nintendo themselves never found a proper use for this controller, so, you know. But that's not what I wanted to talk about. I wanna talk about this thing today. This is a special controller that I built from one of my original Nintendo 64 controllers and a mod kit developed by the company 8BitDo. Fans of the channel will know that, you know, I like to shill Apido products quite a bit because I like them. But this one to me is one of the coolest things they've come out with. So this mod kit allows you to essentially reuse all the important parts of the controller. You know, the buttons, the pads on the inside, the shell. It still feels authentic, but it's fully compatible with not only PC for emulators, but also the official Nintendo Switch N64 online emulator thing. I don't know. I don't pay for that shit. And uh, it also makes the N64 controller wireless. So like, th that's cool. You could actually see the little battery on the inside of it there. And you might ask like why this is so important to me. Like if you can make a controller like this work for N64 emulation, why don't you just use this one? Why do you feel the need to have to get some authentic feeling controller just for some like nostalgia bait? And you know, it, it might just be me looking through rose tinted glasses, but my point is that N64 games were designed to be used with this controller. Like, I was able to develop a, a weird system to make a modern controller work for the two Zelda games on the N64 that it still feels relatively fine, but those are only two games. It's not exactly fun to decide like, oh yeah, I want to play Paper Mario, and then you have to go into the menus, and then you got to figure out, okay, like what button does what, and then you got to figure out like where to map the buttons, and then you got to like figure out like what would be more comfortable for like your layout and everything, and it's, it's a mess. But this makes things a lot more plug and play friendly for me. And if you're subscribed to the garbage pile, you know, link right here, you would know that I'm currently doing a Let's Play of Monster Hunter Try for the Nintendo Wii. And while I could just use a modern controller for that, I felt it was only appropriate to bust out an original Wii Remote and a Wii Classic Controller Pro just for this series. Just to get the exact same feel as someone playing this game in 2009. 
because I can upscale a game, I can put mods in to make textures look better, I can make the game run at a better frame rate, but if I'm not using the original controller, to me, it doesn't feel right. Of course, this doesn't have to be every time I play a game, but if I'm playing a Wii game, I want to use a Wii remote. But beyond my personal philosophies, there actually is a little piece de resistance to this controller that I think makes it so goddamn interesting. We're just doing, we're, we're doing all kinds of props today. Like we're just, we're just really throwing around controllers and handling props today. It's, it's a lot of fun, honestly. I'm sure if you've been playing games for as long as I have, you'll be fully aware of this concept known as stick drift. It's essentially your control sticks becoming unbalanced and registering positions and movements that you never made, but it's just the potentiometers inside are wearing down and they're just not working well anymore. And it's just a flaw with how control sticks are designed today. And it kind of fucking sucks. So let, let's dial it back a little bit, well, potentiometers. So the way that most modern analog sticks work nowadays is that there are two potentiometers on the inside. Basically, each potentiometer is two plastic rings that when you rotate one of them, it changes an electrical current and the controller uses that current to send to the controller and to tell it like what position you're holding on the stick. Like, look, I'm not an electrical engineer, right? I'm just some dork who likes to play video games. But the important thing is that these two plastic rings are rubbing against each other meaning that there is going to be wear over time. We can't make a perfect substance that, you know, keeps its same shape and keeps the same rigidity forever, especially things that are cheap to manufacture like plastic. So eventually, yeah, every control stick is gonna start drifting. And that's just how they're designed. You know, as much as we like, we can't beat physics, at least not yet. Now, if you want to talk about these analog sticks, the original ones in the uh, original N64 controllers, uh, these are far worse. So I'm gonna go put up like a little gif of a diagram here just to show you how they work. And I'm also, I'm probably gonna bring up like old footage that I have of me taking these things apart. So basically how they work is that instead of two potentiometers rubbing against each other and changing electrical currents there, by tilting the stick, you're actually rotating two little wedges and those wedges turn wheels and those wheels break lasers that are firing on the inside of the stick and then the stick is counting how many times the laser is broken, and it's using that number to determine what position the stick is in. Like, it was 1995, right? They were doing all kinds of weird shit. Analog sticks weren't exactly standardized yet. And if you're looking at this diagram right here and you've felt one of these control sticks before, you'll know that um, that's why these sticks feel so distinct. But with this controller, it's actually using a relatively new technology called a Hall Effect joystick. So the Hall Effect is uh, the production of potential difference, the Hall voltage, across an electrical conductor that is transverse to an electric current in the conductor that is applied for the magnetic f All you need to know is that it uses magnets uh, magnets are electricity, electricity is magnets, they're part of the same force called electromagnetism, and this control stick, instead of rubbing two plastic rings together, it's instead using magnets to change electrical currents. And the important thing is that these magnets inside don't touch each other. And again, we can't beat physics, you know, these control sticks are eventually going to go out of whack. Maybe we'll need to recalibrate them every now and then, maybe we can do some fancy stuff with software. But the failure rate on these things, so far, way lower than the traditional potentiometer joysticks. Astronomically lower. I may be overselling it a bit, but like you get my point. They're a more reliable, more technologically advanced version of a control stick that frankly, I just wanna see become the norm. Cause I'm sure we've all experienced stick drift at some point in our lives, especially when controllers are 70 fucking dollars, you expect them to work for a decent amount of time. Not one year before the analog stick inside just starts fucking floundering. And I know that some purists out there are gonna say like, oh, you know, it's not the same stick. It doesn't have the same feeling. It's not gonna feel exactly right. And uh, yeah, you're right. It doesn't feel the same, but I don't think it needs to. Now I did just say at the beginning of this video that I value that authentic feeling with the controller, but my opinion is a little bit more nuanced than that. So yeah, I do value that authentic feeling, but I'm willing to make sacrifices and upgrade things that need to be upgraded just so that the controller lasts longer. Because uh, another thing that's wrong with these control sticks is that um, they're, they're just the worst built analog sticks I've ever seen. In terms of longevity, like I'm sure when they were brand new, they worked just fine. But nowadays, dude, these things are not great. 
I like to call this phenomenon uh, floppy stick syndrome. And the reason that that happens is that I'm gonna put this GIF back up on screen again. So you see how uh, when the stick is uh, tilting and swerving and tilting those little uh, levers down there at the bottom, the bottom part of the gray analog stick is actually rubbing against the uh, bottom part of the housing there. So there's this little concave uh, like bowl on the inside of the control stick. And like we mentioned earlier, when plastics rub against each other, it wears them down. And so I, I'm gonna bring up old footage that I have of me opening this exact analog stick and you'll see um, there's a lot of what I like to call gamer dust inside of it. And that's not dust that has accrued over years of like it's sitting on a shelf or in a drawer somewhere. That's the plastic of the housing. And like, uh, yeah, you can fix this, but it's not something you can easily do. It requires like putting putty on the inside and remolding it to feel exactly the same and making it slippery so the stick can actually glide along the surface. It's a, it's a whole fucking process, all right? One that I don't wanna go through and one that I certainly don't expect anybody else to go through. So yeah, like Hall Effect joysticks, uh, the, it's cool. Uh, it feels good. Uh, like I've been playing a bunch of N64 games recently. I've been playing Mario 64, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Paper Mario, uh, a bunch of others, and they all feel fine. And you know what's funny, actually, I didn't test this, but I, I kind of do want to do this now. Uh, this controller, because it can connect to my PC, it means that I could potentially use it to play modern games. I don't know exactly what games I would play with this thing, but um, that's, a, that's a neat little experiment that I can do. Also a nice uh, benefit for this mod kit. It also uh, supports the rumble pack because this is also uh, the connector module. You kind of need this to be plugged in. So this is apparently a rumble motor, but the rumble motor uh, doesn't work on PC. It currently is only working on the Switch emulator, which kind of sucks, but there's nothing stopping 8 from uh, putting out a firmware patch later on that uh, addresses that. Maybe they already have, maybe they haven't. I don't know, this video is like extremely slapdashed, as are all of my videos. And in terms of actually installing this mod kit, uh, Apido doesn't send you a full controller for you to use. They send you the motherboard, the battery, the little um, connector module down here, and a screwdriver for you to open your N64 controller because yes, this is a DIY project. And I actually did record myself uh, putting this whole controller together, so we're gonna put some footage up on the screen here. Now, I am experienced in taking these controllers apart. I have done plenty of modifications with these things, and I've done plenty of modifications and cleanings of other controllers that I've owned. And this is an extremely easy mod kit to install. Like literally, you just take the old board out, you pop the new one in, put the buttons back, like where they need to go, uh, connect the control stick, like close it all back up, and it just works, you know? But for someone who's never done this kind of project before, it might take you a little bit. It's still not the hardest thing in the world. Like there's no soldering involved. And honestly, I would kind of recommend this as a beginner DIY project. Not only do you get the experience of opening up an old controller and seeing like the old board and how everything was put together and how all this stuff worked, you also get like a brand new, brand new controller for you to use in uh, emulators or on PC games or even on the Switch emulator if you decide to pay for that. So yeah, it just I think this is a really cool thing to have and I just wanted to talk about it. If I'm gonna get on my soapbox a little bit, you know, part of my whole philosophy is getting people to do more things themselves and understand more of what goes into the things they love. And I think this is a perfect starting point. Because if you're a seasoned gamist, then you've interacted with plenty of controllers over the years. And don't you think it's cool to like, understand how these things work, the things that we interact with every single day? And it's cool to just build something yourself and have a little project and you can feel proud of it afterwards. So yeah, good project, highly recommend it. There'll be a link in the description for you to uh, get one yourself. And uh, let me know down in the comments if uh, you decide to go through with this and build your own thing. And on that note, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I'd like to shout out the executive lads who still support me on Patreon, even though I'm not doing anything on it. Uh, you know, their support really does mean the world to me. And your support actually means a lot to me. Uh, even if you can't donate to me specifically, just watching to this point in the video helps me a lot more than you'd expect. So I'll do the whole YouTuber thing, uh, like, subscribe, do all that garbage. Uh, you know, it, it helps me in the algorithm and it helps this channel grow and lets me do bigger and better things. It's uh, kind of weird to think about how me standing in my room yelling at a cell phone, because yes, this is filmed on a cell phone, uh, gets me a following and I can somehow make money off of this and build a career out of it. That's crazy. And it's all thanks to y'all. So um, I really do appreciate it.